Hey guys, Aiden here from Core Electronics, and today we're going to be looking at setting up OctoPi and the OctoPrint print server for a Lulzbot Mini 3D printer. Now, if you've seen the Lulzbot Mini before, you'll know that it can only print using a USB tether, as there's no SD card printing available on the Lulzbot Mini. So what we're going to do is set up OctoPi, which is a Linux distribution that runs OctoPrint print server, and that is going to be able to manage over a network connection all of our printing needs from the Lulzbot Mini. So to do this, you're gonna to need to pick up a few things. One of those things is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. You also need an SD card that's eight gigabytes or larger, a power supply for your Raspberry Pi, and a keyboard and mouse so we can enter some data into our Raspberry Pi before we get it all set up. And you'll also need a way to view what's happening on your Raspberry Pi. So that would just be a HDMI cable and a monitor. So let's get started by working on our SD card. and We're gonna install the operating system directly to it. So we'll go ahead and insert our SD card into our SD card reader on the laptop. Once we get that in, we're gonna quickly format it. So that's as simple as right clicking on it, selecting format. Once we're in here, we can select start and we just wanna quickly format it. FAT32 file system's fine. So once that format's complete, we're gonna go ahead and open up our SD card image writer. We're using Win32 Disk Imager. It's a, it's a nice and easy piece of software you can grab for free. Just do a quick Google search and download it. Now all we need to do is make sure that we've got our SD card selected in this drop-down box, and then we'll just find where we've put our Octopi setup. So you can download Octopi directly from the Octopi website. You just Google Octopi, and it's the first, um, the first response that you get. Go straight into it and in the middle of the page you'll see a download button. So once you've got that downloaded, I think the download's about 1.6, 1.7 gigabytes. Grab that and you can do exactly what I'm doing. Go ahead and write that one to your card. Yes, you are sure that that's what you want to do. And it's pretty much as simple as that to get that operating system written to that SD card. All right guys, so that's how quickly uh, that one went through. So the write has been successful. Now, there's an additional step. So our SD card has just had the operating system of Octopi written to it. Now then there's one more step that you can go through and this is just a bit of a judgment call from you. If you're going to be using an ethernet connection to connect your Raspberry Pi up to the network, you can just skip this section entirely. If you wanted to connect it up to the wireless network, which isn't the best if you are wanting to stream using a camera later on, which you can connect a USB webcam or a Raspberry Pi camera up to your Raspberry Pi for that. Anyways, if you're going to be using it for streaming, Wi-Fi is not the best solution, but either way, if you want to use Wi-Fi, you need to go into the root directory of your SD card now, and you want to be opening up the octopi network.txt document, which is this one here. Once you've got that one opened, you can scroll here, and this is not the best text editor to be using. We'll open it with Notepad++. There we go. And essentially you're just going to be doing the Wi-Fi configuration just like it says here. So the three segments will cover in most cases. Just uncomment the lines prefixed with a single pound sign and that that's all you need to do. So go ahead and if you were using a normal network today, you'd probably be using WPA slash WPA2. Go ahead and delete these pound signs and put your SSID in here. So network name and your secret, secret password in here. In between the quotation marks, once you've got that done, you can just go ahead and save that file and that will allow you to log in directly to your <coughs> internet connection when you first boot up your Pi. So once that's done, we can go ahead and remove our SD card from our computer. And we've now got a working version of Octopi that we can boot up our Raspberry Pi using. Now, all I need to do is insert my newly formatted SD card into my Raspberry Pi, which just goes face down towards the board. Make sure it's inserted correctly. Once I've got that done, I can connect up my HDMI cable, just like that. I can also connect up my power supply, which is not actually that one. I've already got one here ready to go. And I'll also go ahead and connect up a um, keyboard and mouse just so I have some way to input some data into my Raspberry Pi for now. Now the main point of plugging this in now is for a quick and easy way 
of getting our IP address that we will have been assigned to this PC, uh, to this Raspberry Pi, sorry. So we'll go ahead and connect him via Ethernet. Once he's connected up, we'll go ahead straight back over to all right, so now we've got our Raspberry Pi booted up. Everything went through just as we expected it to. What we're gonna do is just log into our Raspberry Pi and the default username and password is just Pi. And Raspberry is the password. Awesome. So the first thing we wanna do is run a Raspi config. To do that, we can just run a sudo raspi-config command and press enter and that's gonna load us straight up into this. Now, the first thing you can do, and the first thing I like to do is to change my user password, it just gives me a bit more security. We then can go into our enable camera setting. This will enable your Raspberry Pi to use a camera connected to the CSI connector on board, which is perfect if you're wanting to stream um, photos or videos or make time lapses of your print using a, cam a camera board. So go in there and you can enable that off the bat. Once you've done that, once Octoprint server's running, if there's a camera connected, it's gonna be streaming that data to it, which is very easy to do. Another thing you can do is go into your advanced options and you can actually change the host name of your Pi. Now, if you were running multiple Raspberry Pis on a single network, this would be the place that you'd go to change the name of the Raspberry Pi. So as a default, it's just called OctoPi which means that when you're searching for that, if you're using a Mac or a Linux computer, you'd be looking at octopi.local as the address you're typing into your URL bar. I can change this here now if I'd like to, and I could call it something like lulzbot-mini. And that just gives me the knowledge that this, the host name of this device is now the lulzbot mini. lulzbot-mini dot local will be the address that I type in to access this one over the network. So in addition to that one setting, we can also go into the advanced options and you've got a couple of other, uh, other things that you can do. So you can enable SSH, which is always good, um, especially if you're looking to one day be able to just access it remotely to do any of these things that we're doing today, you'd be able to do that via SSH. Um, another thing is updating your Raspberry Pi image. So if you click update here, it'll go through and download all the packages that you need to update it to the most recent revision. So there are a few of the quick and easy things you can do before you do anything. Once we finish that one, you'll have to reboot your Pi. So we'll go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so our Pi is booting back up now and the main thing that we're looking for is an IP address. So we wanna know our local IP address on the network and that is for Windows users, the way that you're going to log in to your OctoPi setup. So again, we're gonna to have to log in. Notice now that the host name has changed to Lulzbot Mini Login, not Octopi Login. I didn't change my password or my username, so I can use the same one as before, which was Pi and Raspberry. And there we go, we're logged in. Now to get my uh, IP address, I'm just gonna do a simple ifconfig command. It's a really simple way to find out. And I'm gonna be looking for F0. And if I look on the second line there, you can see the second line of F0, it says INET address 10.0.0.75. So I'm just gonna remember that 75 is the number that I'm looking for. With all that said and done, we can go ahead and connect our Raspberry Pi up to our 3D printer now, and we should be able to log in via the network connection from the laptop. All right, just to make sure, we have to connect our 3D printer up to our OctoPi, otherwise it's definitely not going to work. So we'll go ahead and just connect it via USB. Just like that, just like that. I'm gonna quickly reboot my Pi, just like that. And I'm also gonna make sure my printer's turned on. So now jumping back over to our desktop, we should should be able to log into our Raspberry Pi using that um, IP address that I mentioned before, which was 10.0.0.75. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I'm back on my laptop and I've just logged in to my OctoPrint server using the IP address that we just got off our Raspberry Pi, which was 
dot seventy five. Now there's a couple of other ways. If you guys are network wizards out there, you guys will know there's a couple of other ways to find that IP address. I just think that that's a really simple and straightforward way for someone to find it. So <clears throat> now we're just up to some basic configuration options for our, uh, our Octopi setup. So I'm just going to give this one a username of core and password. Cool, and we'll keep access control enabled. Now, essentially that means that while I can access the OctoPrint server, I can't actually start or control any of the movements of the printer unless I log into it, which is pretty a pretty smart option when it comes to that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in and show you guys the basics of OctoPrint. So I'm now logged in as that user and there's the update available there. So if you guys are setting this one up at home, you're definitely gonna to wanna to go ahead and update your server now. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now. So up the top of the screen, you've got a few options. You've got set, uh, settings and system and in the system settings, you can restart the OctoPrint server, reboot it or shut it down completely. Now in the settings options, you've also got a bunch of different things in there. For the connection, this is talking about the connection to the printer itself. You can set everything as automatic and it will just automatically detect. So you can auto connect that printer and you can save the connection settings. We won't do that just yet. Um, we've also got the state of the printer. So currently because we're not connected to a printer, you can obviously see that that state is offline. And if there was something printing, it would tell you what file was printing. If there was a time lapse happening of it, the total print time approximately of it and all of the other settings that you see there. And you've also got the print, pause and cancel options there. Down below that, you've got your file menu. Now here we can just directly upload G-code files from our computer to our Octopi setup, just like I've done there. So I've just uploaded a really simple uh, Octopus G-code file um, straight to my thing, straight to my Octopi setup. Now in the center of the screen here, you've got this little sectioned off bit. Now this is just a temperature graph of what's happening on your printer. It's also got the options here of entering your data yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make a printer profile for our current printer. So I'm going to edit the default file. That's fine, the origin is the lower left. And now we're just gonna change the volume to our printer. Now. Bear in mind that none of these settings actually matter unless you are planning on slicing on your Pi, and that means you're uploading an STL and you're expecting your Pi to do all the slicing for you into G-code. But I like to uh, just go through the setup of this. So go ahead and you can change that to all the relevant values. You know, the volume on the mini, this is actually just like that. Or whatever you can confirm those and now you've got that set as your default printer we can go ahead and save the connection settings and auto connect to our printer you heard the printer kick up it's obviously talking to something there and we can quickly and easily see that this is about to connect so it's just detecting the board rate at the moment all right guys so we can see that the printer is now connected and operational and it's just as simple as you would expect. So I've got my Octopus file here. I can select to load that one into the printer or I can select to just directly load and print it. If I do that, the printer is gonna kick off straight from the sliced settings from Cura, which is where I sliced that file on the right here. Like I said before, you can see this temperature graph or I can set by entering values in here, I can set different temperatures and get a sort of a live accurate representation of what's going on in my printer. Now, if I go into my control menu, I can also set things like home my printer, and this is just sending those G-code commands directly to the printer to home the different axes. Um, there's also a few other things that you can do in here by extruding or retracting, and general things like fans on, motors off, all those sort of things. In the G-code viewer, it's a bit better when you're actually printing something, but you would actually see a live representation of what the tool head is doing on the print, bread, print bed. Uh, right here, which is quite cool. And the last two are uh, more of sort of pro user things. Um, this enables you to see what G code commands are being sent between the printer and your Octoprint server. And you can also enter your own G code, um, G -code commands into that, um, that terminal line. 
And finally, the time time lapse configuration option just gives you the ability to turn time loop time lapse mode on. And if you do that, you would have a printer connected, and essentially the Octo Print server is going to take a snapshot of whatever the printer is connected to on a certain thing. So. For the time lapse mode, we can see there there's a timed one or on Z change, so you can have it take a picture on every layer and get a really nice um, visual representation of the 3D print. But you know, it could be a 25 hour print in a 15 second time lapse or something. So it's all quite cool. Now that's just the basic the basic setup for an OctoPrint server. Right now, I'm fine to just start printing using my OctoPrint server. So that's that's it. That's a pretty simple process, if you ask me. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a good day.